Welcome back everybody. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Luminar 4, which is an image editor that I think provides an experience that's very different than other image editors that are out there. And this video is sponsored by Skylum. They reached out to me a few weeks ago and they said, would you like to do a video on Luminar 4? And I said, absolutely. I have actually used previous versions of Luminar. In fact, I've used applications they've made since before they were called Skylum. And it's been interesting to see how that company has progressed over the years, because I think they really do have something unique to offer. And it's something that's very different. So let's jump in. So first of all, Luminar can run as a standalone application, which is what we're going to be using in this video. It can also run as a plugin for both Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. So if you want to just bring Luminar into your regular workflow, it is quite possible. So as a standalone application, we're going to check this out. First time I open Luminar, we are going to default into the gallery view where it's just showing me all of the images that I brought into my library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on any of these images and it will bring open the edit window. Window. Now, I want to give you a little tour of the interface so you can see what it is we're doing. So we obviously have our image that we're working on in the middle that takes up most of the screen. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, these are little thumbnails so I can move to different images if I want to edit. And there's a lot of power here too because I can copy adjustments that I've made to one image and apply it to others. We'll get into some of the power in that in a minute because there's some really cool options here. On the right-hand side of the screen, these are where my adjustments are made. And there's a bunch of categories and tabs that I can select from here. We're going to get into those in just one second. And at the bottom of the screen, you are going to see what we call looks. Now, the idea behind looks is a look is essentially a preset. And the idea is that we can start with a preset and then make just minor adjustments to get there faster. You can pick a specific look and it's going to be a time saver because you can just go in and move a couple sliders to adjust the image to that look. This is a very cool option, but that's not what we're going to be dealing with in this video because I want to show you some of the really powerful things that are under the hood with the adjustments that we can do and show you how you're going to get the most out of Luminar. So you can actually toggle this view on and off if you don't want it up. It does take a bunch of real estate at the bottom of the screen. There is a button on the toolbar up here called looks and that will toggle the looks on and off. There are other buttons that we'll use up here too. There's one where you get a split view where we can see before and after on an image. The eye will toggle the image back and forth. We have the crop tool, export tool. Everything's fairly conventional here. But what I want to do is I want to look over on the right hand side of the screen. This is where all of the adjustments that we're going to make to affect the final image are going to be done. And there's categories on here. If you look at the very top, you're going to see there is a layers category. You can actually stack layers so I can build effects on top of one another. There's a tools section next to that, which allows you to do crop and rotate, erase, clone and stamp. And then under this are where we're going to have the real power in Luminar here. So if we open up this first one, this is essentials. I'll just scroll through them real quick. We have essentials, we have creative, we have portrait and we have a pro mode. And then the last one says depreciated. And this is where older effects are going to go. If we open the first one, which is essentials, this first thing you're going to see at the top is called light. And this is fairly conventional of what you're used to seeing in a photo editor. It allows us to control white balance, color temperature, exposure settings. We have smart contrast. On any of these palettes, you're generally at the bottom going to see advanced settings. And if I click on that, it's going to give me even more granular control over this. So if I want to actually go in and adjust curves manually, I can actually set points and do that. So it's going to give you a lot of power. So the idea in general when you are editing images is that you are going to have controls like something like levels or curves that work on a global level. In other words, they affect the entire image. And so this is great, but then you might want to go in later, particularly if you're doing a landscape or if you're doing portrait photography, and you're going to make localized adjustments on things like maybe the sky or grass or mountains or skin tones or whatever that is. And you don't want those adjustments to affect everything else. And so a lot of times you have to get into a lot of masking. And what's really cool about Luminar 4 is a lot of these adjustments that they allow you to make in here allow you to skip over a lot of those things and they actually turn a job that might take a couple hours to do that's really complicated into something that you can just do in a couple minutes and I want to give you a couple examples of this. So we're on the light panel right now. I'm going to go down to the next panel which says AI Enhance. I'm going to click on that to select it and open it up and I want to talk about AI for just a second because this is definitely the big feature that Skylum are pushing in Luminar and it is extremely powerful. So artificial intelligence basically this is a way for the software to analyze the image and it becomes content aware and it can actually tell what things are in the image in general. It can tell, for instance, in a landscape where the sky is. It can tell what the ground is. It can tell what water is. If you have a person in the scene, it can tell that it's a human being. It can see their face. And then it gets down to a really specific level and we're going to get into portraits in a minute and it can start to analyze things like eyes and lips and eyebrows and you can make adjustments based on these things that are content aware. So I want to show you how this works in the context of an image like this. So 
Basically, AI Enhance is going to be a way for the software to enhance the image. In other words, bring up levels, shadow detail without you having to go in and localize those things. So if I grab the AI Accent slider, I'm just going to move this towards the right and you're going to see that the image starts to brighten up just a little bit. And I'll do a before and after here. I'm going to grab the, the dual mode here so we can see. And so if on the left side is before, on the right side is after, and you can see that we've increased some contrast. We've opened up the shadows. We put much more detail in that airplane. I can take this a step further and let's say that our sky requires more detail. I can use the AI sky enhancer, which is going to get pretty wild pretty quick, I think, because this guy's already fairly dramatic. And so with two sliders, I've basically been able to go in and do a bunch of work that previously would have taken me some masking to do and I would have had to maybe do a gradient somewhere and I would have had to treat these things differently. But this is content aware, so it's able to just pull that up out of nothing. In fact, I think a really good place to start on here, traditionally you would go to that light panel and you would work with exposure, highlight, and shadow detail. But now you can just grab these AI sliders and you can start to bring the image together really quickly. So let's look at another example. This is a portrait. If I go over to the AI Enhance tab, I'm going to grab the AI Accent. I'm going to bring that up and it's going to make the image a little brighter. It's going to even out our contrast just a little bit. Let's click on the Next tab, which is AI Structure. So if we open that palette up, now this is a different slider. Now, essentially what Structure is going to do is it acts a little bit like Clarity Sliders. It's a little more involved with that, but essentially what it's going to do is it's going to increase contrast in detailed areas of the image. And if you've ever worked with a Clarity Slider, you know this is something that you don't want to do to a portrait. In fact, Clarity Sliders just look weird on human skin. But I want to show you something very cool about this. So first of all, we can either take away Structure so we can soften it up. In fact, let me go back to the middle here. And so that's where we start. Watch the background. It's going to really soften up when I bring that slider all the way over. Now, if I go the other way with it, it's going to increase the amount of detail that we have in that background. I'm going to crank the boost up too, just so we can really go out, out our way here to make sure that you guys see what's going on here. Now, notice that it did not affect the person in our image. It didn't affect the skin, didn't affect the face. In fact, when I do a quick before and after, I'm going to hold this down. There's before. Here's after. Now, we did make this brighter a little bit. That did affect the person in the image, but the structure details did not. And so this is because it is aware of content. And so what it's able to do is recognize the person in the image. It's going to increase the structure and detail, but it's going to mask out the person that's in the image. Again, this is something that used to require drawing a mask. It required a lot of work to do. Now, obviously, I have this cranked up quite a bit, and that does not look real hot. And you might want to bring the boost up just a hair. So we just get a little bit more detail in the back. And I could go in and actually work on this just a little bit more. But really, within just a couple sliders here, we've made a huge difference in our image. Let's do a quick before and after again so you can see how subtle it is. But we've just brightened up the image and we brought up some detail in the background. You can also take it away if it's too much. You can soften that out. Here's the difference here, original image. Here's our new one. And just with a couple sliders, you have a lot of control over what it is you're working on. So I want to show you another example of content-aware artificial intelligence. Now, one of the big features in Luminar 4 is the ability to do AI sky replacement. Now, this is not a discussion of ethics and altering photos. And quite frankly, this is done fairly often in real estate photography and things that need to be done quick and on a budget. And it's not a feature that I would personally use, but I do want to show this to you because it's very impressive. If you've ever had to cut out and replace the sky in an image, you know that can be a very labor intensive process that you're going to spend hours in something like Photoshop doing. And I want to show you how quickly it's done here. And I think this is a testament to how strong this whole idea of artificial intelligence is and possibilities of where this might even go, this just being the tip of the iceberg here. So to do this, let's look at this image. We've got an urban landscape here and we've got some sky peeking out. We also want to show you have a lot of reflections going on in here. And so if you were going to actually replace the sky in cut this out. Could take some time to do. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Luminar. Over on the right hand side of the screen, we are going to go from Essentials down to Creative. The first option in here is a palette that says AI Sky Replacement. I'm going to select that. And from the drop down box, we're going to select a sky. So let's take Blue Sky 1 and see what happens. It's going to take a second to render and not too severe. It actually just puts some clouds in my sky. And I want to show you a quick before and after of what happened here. So here's before. Here's after, and you're probably going to see, let's go with the, the uh, two-pane window here, you're going to see that it actually adjusted the lighting 
to work as well. It actually brought down some of the shadows to match in with where the new clouds are. So it's kind of impressive actually. And there's a bunch of skies in here that you can choose from. Uh, let's go to something more dramatic. Dramatic sky one, here we go. It looks pretty dramatic. Let's go down to these dramatic sunsets because these get kind of interesting too. And you're gonna notice that the color temperature will actually change a bit too. And the way it deals with reflections, it deals with the overall tonality of the image. You can actually go in here and get very granular in your control over adjustments on here where you want your horizon blending to be. But even if I zoom into all this, I mean, it's like this used to require cutting a mask to do and it was a lot of work. And this does a really nice job. There's not any haloing going on or any weird sharpness or anything. Let's jump into 200%. You can see that it's pretty tight. So I want to take us back to portraits for just a second because this whole concept of content awareness and the fact that we can identify that there is a human in the photo, then we can also see what skin looks like and we can also see where the eyes are and the lips are. And this has a lot of really cool features that are going to be able to apply to retouching. So if you've ever done retouching for fashion or even weddings, you know that this is a very time consuming activity and you can spend a lot of hours doing a lot of retouching. And I want to show you how using a lot of this AI content awareness is going to make this a lot easier too. And we can do something that used to take hours in a few seconds. So if we go back to our model here, first thing we're going to do is some skin smoothing. If I zoom in, you can see that we do have some blemishes here that we want to try and deal with. And so the, what I'm going to do is over here on the right, we're going to go from creative where we are now, we're going to go down to portrait. If I select portrait, the first tool you're going to see here is the AI skin enhancer. And this is super easy to use. All I do is bring the amount up. And because we do have some defects here, I'm going to turn that on as well and you can see that real quick we clean a lot up I could go in and clean a little more up if I wanted to I know that luminar have uh, specifically kept this kind of mild in the end result because this is something that's really easy to push too far the other thing I want to show you is as high as we have this cranked in fact let's take it all the way up where you're gonna start seeing that it starts looking a little too plasticky it does preserve a lot of skin texture that's way too high I'm gonna bring that back just a little bit let's go about 71 there so be a little back from there. And yeah, quick before and after. I'm going to toggle that on and off. So there's before, there's after. So it's pretty amazing. I'll show you another thing you can do here as well. If we go down to the next panel here, which is Portrait Enhancer, I'm going to select that. And this gives us an amazing amount of control over a lot of parameters. So let's start with the first one, Face Light. If I start to bring that up a little bit, I really love how what this does is it just kind of acts like somebody's holding a reflector up. So we can actually brighten her face just a little bit. I'll give you another example here because I want to show you what these eye controls do. So if we go into eye whitening, her eyes are already pretty pretty white, but we can bring that out a little bit. Eye Enhancer is an awesome tool. What it's going to do is when I move this over, watch her eyes, it's going to bring in not only sharpness, but also a little vibrance to the eyes. And we're going to really bring out that color somewhat. And Dark Circles Remover, she didn't have a lot, but it will bring that back just a little bit. So it looks pretty good. We can slim her face just a hair because this was done with a wider lens and we can enlarge the eyes just a little bit. I'd be real careful on that one because it can look kind of strange if you're doing that in the wrong context. Eyebrow improve. Let's go ahead and darken her eyebrows a little bit, bring that in somewhat. And the lips, she's obviously wearing a lot of lipstick, so they're not gonna really do much to those, but teeth whitening, we can go in and bring those up just a little bit. And if I do a quick before and after, here is before, here's after. We made some really nice improvements with just a couple slider drags and we could take it a step further since she's in this 1930s kind of get up here and if I go down to the Orton effect this is another cool uh, tool that you have let's go type 2 and let's bring that up and we're gonna get that really soft Hollywood look from the 1930s and so here's a quick before and after here's before on the image and here's after so you can see by this demo that Luminar gives us something that is a really powerful editor with an enormous amount of efficiency. And what I like about it is it's something that's very different than other applications that are out there. It gives you a very different way of working. The whole idea of having more going on under the hood that allows you to just with a couple sliders be able to make some major adjustments. Of course, you get that granular control if you want also, but the whole idea here is efficiency and being able to do more with less. And I think they've done a really wonderful job on this. You should check Check it out. I will put a link in the show description below. If you use an offer code, you want to pre-order Luminar 4 when it ships, which is in a few weeks. You can save $10 off your order if you use offer code Ted Forbes on checkout. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to Skylum for giving me this opportunity to share this with you guys. I think it's something that's really interesting and I want to know what you guys think. So drop me a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.